Lecture 5.5 .5, Numerical Integration Using integrals to find area works extremely well as long as we can find the antiderivative of the function. Sometimes the function is too complicated to find the antiderivative. At other times, we don't even have a function, but only measurements taken from real life. What we need is an efficient method to estimate area when we cannot find the antiderivative. For our example, we'll use y equals 1 8 x squared plus 1 over the interval from 0 to 4. The actual area under the curve can be found by taking the integral from 0 to 4 of 1 8 x squared plus 1 dx, which is 1 24th x cubed plus x evaluated from 0 to 4 or 20 thirds, which is 6.6 .6 repeating. The left-hand rectangular approximation gives us an approximate area of 1 plus 1 and 1 eighth plus 1 and 1 half plus 2 and 1 eighth equals 5 and 3 fourths or 5.75 which is too low. And we can see by looking at the picture why it's too low. The right-hand rectangular approximation gives us an approximate area of 1 and 1 8 plus 1 and 1 half plus 2 and 1 8 plus 3 which is equal to 7 and 3 fourths or 7.75, which is too high. Since we have one estimate that is too low and another estimate that is too high, we could try averaging the two. 7.75 plus 5.75 divided by 2 gives us 6.75. We know the correct answer is 6.66 repeating, so our answer is still a little high, but close, only 1.25% error. Averaging right and left rectangles gives us trapezoids. If we calculate the area of each trapezoid using the formula for the area of a trapezoid, we get 1 half times 1 plus 9 eighths plus 1 half times 9 eighths plus 3 halves plus 1 half times 3 halves plus 17 eighths plus 1 half times 17 eighths plus 3. We can factor out the 1 half and we get t equals 1 half times 27 halves or 27 fourths which is 6.75 which is still too high. This is the trapezoidal rule t equals h over 2 plus y sub 0 plus 2y sub 1 plus 2y sub 2 plus dot 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 plus 2y sub n minus 1 plus y sub n, where h is the width of a subinterval. This gives us a better approximation than either the left or right rectangles. Compare this with the midpoint rule. If we calculate the area using rectangles that touch at the midpoint, 
we get an approximate area of 6.625. which is a 0.625% error, which is too low. The midpoint rule gives us a closer approximation than the trapezoidal rule, but in the opposite direction. The trapezoidal rule gives us 6.750, or a 1.25% error, which was too high. The midpoint rule gives us 6.625, which was a 0.625% error and was too low. Notice that the trapezoidal rule gives us an answer that has twice as much error as the midpoint rule, but in the opposite direction. If we use a weighted average, we have 2 times 6.625 plus 6.750 divided by 3, which equals 6.6 .6 repeating. This is the exact answer. Ooh, ah! Wow. Okay, you're supposed to be impressed. This weighted approximation gives us a closer approximation than the midpoint or trapezoidal rules. If we use the midpoint rule here, M would be 2H, which is the width of a subinterval, times y1, which is this height right here, plus 2h times y3, and factoring out a 2h, we get 2h times y1 plus y3. The trapezoidal rule would give us one half the sum of the two ends, which is y0 plus y2 times the base, which is 2h, plus one half times y2. plus y4 times 2h. The 2's cancel, so we get t equals h times y sub 0 plus y sub 2 plus h times y sub 2 plus y sub 4. Factoring out an h, we get t equals h times y sub 0 plus 2y sub 2 plus y sub 4. Now, finding the weighted average using 2m plus t over 3, we get 1 third times 4h times y1 plus y3 plus h times y sub 0 plus 2y sub 2 plus y sub 4. So we have twice the midpoint plus a trapezoidal. Eliminating the parentheses and factoring out an h, we get h over 3 times 4y1 plus 4y3 plus y0 plus 2y2 plus y4. And putting the y terms in order then, we get h over 3 times y sub 0 plus 4y sub 1 plus 2y sub 2 plus 4y sub 3 plus y sub 4.
Simpson's rule. S equals h over 3 times y sub 0 plus 4y sub 1 plus 2y sub 2 plus 4y sub 3 plus dot 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 plus 2y sub n minus 2 plus 4y sub n minus 1 plus y sub n where h equals the width of a subinterval and n must be even. Now notice that the coefficient of the first term is 1 the coefficient of the second term is 4 and then we alternate 2's and 4's till we get to the end and we end with 4 and then a 1 also remember this 3 in the denominator is because we used a weighted average to develop the formula. Here's an example for y equals 1 8 x squared plus 1. s would be 1 3rd times 1 plus 4 times 9 8 plus 2 times 3 halves plus 4 times 17 8 plus 3 which gives us 1 third times 1 plus 9 halves plus 3 plus 17 halves plus 3 or 1 third times 20 which is 6.6 .6 repeating. Simpson's rule can also be interpreted as fitting parabolas to sections of the curve which is why this example came out exactly. Simpson's rule will usually give you a very good approximation with relatively few subintervals. It is especially useful when we have no equation and the data points are determined experimentally.